What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. I'm your host Warren Thompson and we just got our very first teaser trailer for Thor Love and Thunder and it did not disappoint. It was awesome. We got our first look at Ravenger Thor with the Guardians of the Galaxy and a first look at the mighty Thor Jane Foster. Now there's a lot happening in this trailer. They introduce other gods like Zeus and Gore the God Butcher is not in this trailer which is interesting because there's a rumor going around that perhaps Gore the God Butcher could actually make his first appearance in Moon Knight. We know Moon Knight has introduced gods and we know that Gore the God Butcher, well, He's the God Butcher. He goes around killing gods. So could they perhaps be saving that first look for Moon Knight? We're going to talk about everything and break down this trailer. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. Let's dive into it. So right off the bat, like I mentioned, there are some rumors that have been going around that states maybe Gore the God Butcher could be appearing in one of the episodes of Moon Knight. Now, I have seen episodes 1 through 4, and I have not seen Gore the God Butcher yet, but he could appear in episodes 5 or 6. After all, he is called Gore the God Butcher for a reason. He goes around and he starts killing gods. Now, if you're not familiar with who Gore the God Butcher is, he is going to be the main villain of Thor Love and Thunder, and he is going to be played by Christian Bale. Now, here's a brief backstory on why Gore the God Butcher wants to kill all of the gods. Gore was born on a planet with no names where he was taught to worship the gods. However, his life was filled with tragedy. He had a wife and a bunch of kids, but sadly his wife died and all of his children died as well. And right before his last son died, he prayed and begged the gods to give him help. But his son ended up dying and he started to express that he didn't believe that the gods were real. And this led to him being exiled by his people. However, while wandering in the desert waiting to die himself, he witnessed two gods fighting. One of the gods was the Dark Elder God Null, the symbiote god, and the other was a gold-armored, purpled skin god. The gods fell to the floor, and Gore went up to them, shocked to believe that the gods actually existed. The gold-armored god begged him for help. However, as he was begging him, the Dark Elder God's sword turned into an amorphous mass, and it bonded to him, and he created the all-black Necro Sword, and he used this to kill the god. And for from here on out, he was just furious that the gods actually did exist, but they didn't come to his aid. So from here on out, he set out to kill gods. Now in this trailer, it actually looks like we see a lot of gods as we see Olympus in this trailer and Zeus. And I'm assuming this is where Gore the God Butcher is planning to strike and it looks like they're all going to be in a lot of trouble, but we'll get into that in a bit. Now, Thor Love and Thunder, of course, takes place after the events of Avengers Endgame, where Thor left with the Guardians of the Galaxy, leaving new Asgard to Valkyrie, who we see in this trailer is now the King of Asgard. But the trailer starts off with Thor kind of running through different phases in life. It shows him as a little kid, it then shows him as a young adult, in which we actually see the classic Thor comic costume right here. He then ages up a couple of more times until we get to where he is right now, where he says that his hands were once used for battle, now they're but humble tools used for peace. We see him plant Stormbreaker into the ground, which is interesting because we know that the handle for Stormbreaker was made from Groot's arm. So the fact that he's planting it into the ground kind of like tree implies that the handle might actually kind of be alive still. Either that or Thor is just kind of getting a little bit more grounded now. We see him meditating on a distant planet, contemplating who exactly he is and who he wants to be in life as we hear him say, I need to figure out exactly who I am. Now we cut to the Marvel Studios logo and then we see Thor getting in shape because when we left him in Avengers Endgame, he was still very much bro Thor. And if you take a look at the hat that he's wearing, you can see the classic Avengers logo. And over the top of it, he wrote strongest to where the hat reads the strongest Avenger. This is a callback to Thor Ragnarok where him and the Hulk fought over who the strongest Avenger was. Where Thor of course claimed that he was the strongest Avenger but Hulk said that he was. Also notice the skeleton on the right which seems to be from a really really big being that Thor might have defeated in the past. Which could be how Thor knew that he would be there and the chains would be there as well. Now in the next scene, we see Thor show off his new slash old body because it's how he's always looked as he takes off a coat revealing a new look. Now we know that this look is going to be called Ravenger Thor. The Ravengers of course being the group that Peter Quill was a part of in which they would all wear red leather jackets. And as we can see here, Thor is wearing a red leather jacket, but he ripped the sleeves off. And this is a look taken directly from the comic Thor Thunderstrike. He's even wearing the same boots. Now we see him with the Guardians of the Galaxy because of course he left with 
them and some blue creatures in the back. Now these could be the Entidites from the comics and it does look like the Guardians are actually helping protect them. If you notice in the scene where Thor takes off his jacket and stands on top of the rock, below him we can actually see Quill hiding behind the rock, we can see Nebula in the background, and behind her we can actually see one of these people is dead. Now the next scene shows the Guardians of the Galaxy running towards a battle and Thor turns away. Now in the next scene, since he says his superhero days are over, I'm assuming this right here is Thor not wanting to really battle anymore. So he chooses to not join this fight, at least as the same Thor that he has always been, because this is clearly the same scene where he rips off the coat and reveals Ravenger Thor. So I'm expecting him to walk away, change into a Ravenger, and then join the battle. Because when he says goodbye to the Guardians of the Galaxy in the next scene, we can see that he's still wearing the Ravenger clothes. The Guardians take off and go through a hex point, which we've seen them do in the Guardians films. That allows them to go to essentially any place in the galaxy they want to. And we also see the awesome Korg. He's back protecting Thor from all the ghosts. Piss off, ghost! He's freaking gone. And as you can see, he is dressed as a Ravager as well. But Thor and Korg leave the Guardians. Now the next scene shows new Asgard. And the first thing that we notice is a boat being pulled over the water, not in the water, over the water by two goats. These goats are Thor's mystical goats, Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder. In the comics, they pull Thor's chariot and they can take him through different parts of the galaxy and even into different dimensions. Now in this scene, it kind of looks like they're pulling a party boat. As the boat goes by, you can see a sign that says cocktail on it, which implies that this is pretty much a party boat. But on the boat, you can catch a quick peek of Valkyrie and Korg. Now the next scene is of Olympus, but we'll come back to that in just a bit. Because the scenes after this, we actually see Thor in New Asgard. He seems to be having a pretty good time as we see him kiss a girl. We then see him on a boat floating through space. Now Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder probably pulled him into space, but in the next scene, we see him using Stormbreaker to open the Bifrost portal, which we know he can do as they explained that he could in Avengers Infinity War. Here we also get a new look at Thor's brand new suit. We can see that it is very much gold and blue now, kind of closer to a comic accurate version. Now in the next scene, we see Olympus and going back to the scene that we saw before, that is also Olympus. Now of course many people know Olympus from Greek mythology, but in the MCU, Olympus is its own realm that exists outside of Earth. It's pretty much almost exactly like Asgard, except it is home to different gods. And here we actually see Zeus and we actually see him catch a lightning bolt, which is pretty dangerous cool. Now, although we only see the back of him, we do know that Zeus is going to be played by Russell Crowe. The next scene we have is Thor and Korg looking at a giant beast covered in snow. Of course, it's dead. And this is taken directly from the comics, the comic Thor, God of Thunder. Now, from here, we get another look at new Asgard. And we can see that it's pretty much at this point a tourist attraction. And that makes sense. If Thor appeared in real life on our planet, a lot of people would probably want to go and see a real life god. If you look in the background, especially on the right, you can see some golden buildings, which is very similar to the old Asgard where they used to live. But you can also see a bunch of cruise ships in the background as well, showing us that Asgard really is a tourist location, which kind of makes sense because they're going to have to make money some way. They didn't really have to worry about money on the old Asgard, but on Earth, Earth, it looks like they do. Now then they show Valkyrie, who again is the king of Asgard right now, in an earthly meeting that you can tell she just clearly does not enjoy. If you take a look at the sign on the right, we can see that it actually says Renewable Energy Conference. And this is probably pretty funny slash boring for Valkyrie as she comes from Asgard, a magical realm, where energy probably isn't a problem. But you can tell that she really doesn't like dealing with the politics of Earth. Now from here we get another scene of Olympus and we can see a giant statue of Zeus in the background, holding a lightning bolt. And if you take a close look at the bottom, we can actually see Jane Foster's The Mighty Thor walking side by side next to Thor. Notice the two long red capes. This is Thor and to his right is Jane Foster's The Mighty Thor. We also see Valkyrie and Korg there as well. Now, as these scenes play, we hear Peter Quill's voice talking to Thor, most likely giving him advice before the Guardians take off and leave Thor and Korg. And he says, if you ever feel lost, just look into the eyes of the people that you love. As he says this, Quill is looking past Thor to his team, the Guardians of the Galaxy. He's also kind of sad because, as we know, Gamora is no longer there. There is a version of Gamora that is out there. However, it is not the one that he fell in love with. We do know that this story is definitely going to be explored in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Here we also get a little bit of a taste of what the comedy is going to be like in Thor Love and Thunder. If it's anything like Thor Ragnarok, it's going to be hilarious, and the scene shows us that. 
Quill says, look into the eyes of the people you love, and he looks past Thor, but Thor is looking directly into his eyes and kind of interrupts his gaze. We see Star-Lord slowly start moving his head, trying to look past Thor, but Thor keeps moving his head to get in the way, trying to look into Peter Quill's eyes, implying that he's come to love him. But of course, in a good comedic moment, Peter Quill says, not me, and Thor says, oh, I was just trying to listen. And speaking of love, the very last scene that we get is our very first look at Jane Foster's The Mighty Thor, wielding a mended Mjolnir. Now, this is going to be coming from the Mighty Thor comic line, where Jane Foster does become the Mighty Thor. Now, in this comic line, she also has cancer, and every time she transforms into the Mighty Thor, the cancer gets worse. And Taika Waititi has confirmed that this is a storyline that they will be exploring in this movie. But one thing that is for sure and is really awesome is that the Mighty Thor, Jane Foster, is worthy to lift Mjolnir. And Natalie Portman looks like she gained some weight to play this role. She's looking pretty buff there, and I'm really digging her as the Mighty Thor. And that is our first teaser trailer. We did not get a look at Gore, but we did get a look at the Mighty Thor, Jane Foster, we did get a look at Zeus, kind of from behind, but a great look at Olympus, and of course, a lot of great shots of Thor, Ravenger Thor, and the Guardians of the Galaxy. Let me know what you think about this trailer in the comments down below, and if you spotted any really cool Easter eggs, be sure to put those in the comments as well. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest Marvel videos. For live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.